What is up, Scrub Fam? I am back with a deck profile, one that everyone has asked me about a lot recently because they know that I've updated this deck, and of course they saw the updated Zamasu list that I've been running as well, which has been having a lot of success. And this is, of course, the Goku Black deck that I played that was in the recording where it's rolled over a Vegito deck due to me having some incredibly fortunate draws and my opponent, of course, not having such fortunate draws. But nevertheless, we're here and we're with, we have some updates. The format, we're starting to get a feel for it. For it. And uh, this deck, I've, of course, made the main deck, and then I now have a sideboard with a sideboard plan based off of what I expect to be prevalent going forward. So if we just get to the deck itself, if we look at a lot of the shell, a lot of the core pieces are still there. You know, four coercions, four objections, four bulmas, four guasus, four Goku blacks, four... Zamasu the Invincible. So a lot of that stuff is still the same. And of course our four boost attack Piccolos. We still kept three Whis the Resting Attendant and one Whis the Sacred Guard from our previous list. We did add in a tech choice of one copy of Returning Golden Frieza, which I really like in the deck. Mostly just as an additional tech option to be able to bounce a few things. So number one, your main play or your best play often is going to be bouncing your beers back to hand to be able to replay it if you need to basically stay alive. And a lot of the a lot of the pieces of this deck are really just meant to help you just stay alive as long as possible so you can get to where you need to go. And that's pretty much what the goal of the deck is. The deck is very single minded no matter what game, whether it's game one, game two, game three, the core and of the deck is meant to get you to the point where you're dropping an eight black eight, eight drop goku black on the turn that you're supposed to and through testing i've just gotten to the point where i found a lot of the cards that are 100 percent necessary to do that in game one so that's what this main deck looks like also in the main deck we made a change we we're playing uh, a lot more extra cards we've narrowed it down we were at 16 originally but now i'm at 13 and i'm running seven negates total four coercions and three mafabas Mafaba and testing continues to get better and better. It gives you the extra turns you need, whether if it's to bridge you to the turn where you're going to be able to go off, or just to stave off threats and give you an opportunity to draw into additional removal pieces. So Mafaba and testing has been even more just crucial to the deck being able to stay alive long enough to see the end of the game. I also added two time rings. Time ring, since I don't own the Rose promos, I'm forced to run Time Ring in the deck. I think I'd be running it anyway because I can just find multiple pieces. And it also helps out because I made a change and I run, instead of running four of the 8-drop Cuckoo Blacks, I run three and then one infinite Fuse Zamasu. As you guys saw in the video, I went off and was able to play the 8-drop and, and then union the 8-drop and the 4-drop Zamasu into the 10-drop and then just closed out the game really relatively easily. And Time Ring helps me find all those pieces. Another common question I get is why I don't run booze. Main reason why is because Bulma and Guasu are ideal one drops. Bulma is going to find me my Whis, and I need my Whis. I got to have my Whis uh, in order to have the optimal draw on this deck. And Guasu does a lot of things. It can find you a boost attack pickle over defense. It can find you one of the gods that you need to be able to combo. It could find you a Whis additionally if for some reason you haven't seen a Bulma yet. So that card does everything that you want it to do. So. I really like the deck itself. I still run Zeno the Plain God as two copies main deck. A lot of times, the problem that both Zamasu and Goku Black have is they can't handle a, a wide board, so a board with multiple threats, especially Goku Black. Since Goku Black doesn't have that additional life that Zamasu does, he has to be a lot more careful with his life total. And Zeno the Plain God allows him to get plenty of extra turns in order to be able to turn the corner. As you guys saw in the video where I did Goku Black versus the Androids, uh, and of course them having the cell and putting me down to three cards, I then Zenoed the next turn after they awakened and was able to put us even at five cards each, which was huge in the deck success. So I really like Zeno the Plain God and the Goku Black deck to help you bridge if you need to. Otherwise, though, like I said, this deck is really single-minded. It has one goal in mind, and the optimal draw, of course, is you ramping. You can still win the game with your indestructible attackers, your, of course, your 15k Zamasus, and your, your 25k Zamasus as well. Being indestructible threats that are big bodies that your opponent can't kill, you can apply pressure with, so I really like those. Um... And even so, sometimes you might want to side in the third Zamasu that I have in the sideboard in order to help you out. So those are some choices in the deck that you need to, of course, think about. Another thing is the Goku Black Leader. Guys, make sure when you're using the front side of this card that you're squeezing as much value out of it as possible. Make sure you're not using the ability... Uh, 
willy-nilly or pretty loose you want to make sure that if you for instance you need to if you want to weas on three so if, you know you can drop an energy let's say you don't hit your objection you go to turn two play an energy turn three play an energy and then you can also black play your weas and then you continue ramping and you get back to the energy ahead that you wanted to be for that turn so make sure that you're using that ability as the best as possible and of course you make sure you're not using it as a detriment to yourself or you're just using it wastefully so always remember that on the front side ideally in the deck itself the turn sequences play out play out the way you need them to so turn one bowl into least turn two objection so then you're going to be at one two three energy turn four play your weas turn five then play your Zamasu and your warrior, the gods go who black and then use your ability to have a six energy up and then kill one of the tapped ones. And then the next turn you'll play an energy, use Goku Black's ability, then evolve into this the eight drop, kill three of your opponent's energy, and then now you've turned the corner, now you're way ahead, and now your opponent is playing from far behind, and now you have plenty of time to close out the game, whether it be with the big triple striker plus your body as the Goku Black leader, or if you happen to get the Zamasu. One thing that I've been thinking about with the deck itself is taking out the 5-drop returning Golden Frieza and putting in the second infinite view Zamasu in the main deck. I don't know if that's overreaching, but I feel like in game one that might actually be the better strategy. I'm going to continue testing, and of course, if I, I do make that, make that change, you guys will be the first ones to know. So that's something to consider too. Another thing is uh, Weiss the Sacred Guard. That's another card that you can think about taking out of the deck. When I play it and, it, and I need it, it's great. But that's such a low percentage of the time in game one that I honestly could think about moving that to the sideboard and bringing something else into the main deck. So now we go to the sideboard options. Four Sensu Beans. Four Sensu Beans is strictly for the token matchup. Sensu Beans in the Gotenks matchup are going to be way more be are going to be way better than, of course, your Weiss Coercions because you need Beans to be able to stave off the tokens. Next is going to be four Courageous Heart Yajirobis. A lot of the time, this is going to be coming in straight in for the Guasus, and you're really only doing this against aggro just because you need the additional blockers and the additional removal, and that's what Yajirobi provides, and it's something that your opponent has to deal with. So a lot of times, you're going to be swapping four for four. Next is two Group Leader Pilafs. You can shave one Guasu, one Bulma, or if you want to shave the Sacred Guard Whis and one of your one drops out to put into two group leader peel-offs. This is good in the mirror if you want to be able to strip your opponent's ability to have Instructable. It's also great if you need to stave off a threat. So for instance, Vegito, uh, you need to take away the triple attack on one of the attacks that they're making and just take it as a single. This will help you strip that down to just a single attack. So I really like group leader peel-off, but it definitely is a sideboard card. Next we have two Zeno buttons. This is really for the Cold Bloodlust matchup. Because you want to be able to tap out on your turns and still have protection, Zeno Button gives that to you. The fourth Mothaba, again, this is for aggro. And just in general, you know that you need to be able to stay alive as long as possible. The fourth Mothaba is going to help you get there. Then, of course, we have the six drop Zamasu, a third copy that we can put into the main, that we can slide into the main deck and sideboard. This is also, again, it's good against Cold Bloodlust decks because they have no way to deal with indestructible threats. Their Cold Bloodlust are pretty much dead against them. So you can side this in as another threat to be able to put pressure on the opponent. And each time you play one of these 25k bodies, your opponent's going to have to combo substantially and give up a lot of cards in order to be able to combat these on a turn to turn basis. And then, of course, we have the second Infinite View Zamasu, which I think will end up moving to the main deck as we test more. But otherwise, this is the deck so far. I do think the Courageous Heart Yajirobis in the sideboard are something that I have to continue testing, but I really like bringing them in against aggressive decks because it's gonna it's an additional piece of removal that I don't have. That's one thing that I really like about Zamasu over Black is Zamasu has access to his own 4-drop promo, which gives you additional removal in the deck, whereas Goku Black is really limited on Beerus, Zeno the Plain God, and then of course if you want to play Courageous Heart Yajirobis in the main, or if you want to run Goten uh, Family of Justice as like a tech option, you can. But otherwise, the deck, when it hits the ceiling, it's amazing. Uh, when it's a mediocre draw, it's pretty good, but if you hit the floor of the deck, which of course is possible in any deck, it ends up being pretty bad if you can't actually get that strategy in game one. Luckily, most tournaments now are running best of three, so this deck ends up being pretty resilient, but they can trust me, it can go off. It's it's extremely fun to play. Goku Black and Zamasu are two of my favorite villains from the show, and two of my favorite decks to play because they're just they're alternate ways of playing the game, which I always enjoy, which is ramp. So 
Anyway, this is my updated Goku Black list. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, personal crises, or if you want to hate on me, please be sure to leave something in the comments. We are cl closing in on 230 subscribers. The amount of subscribers that have been coming up in the past couple weeks is insane. I cannot thank you guys enough for all the support you've been giving me with all these deck profiles that I've been doing, the gameplay videos that I'm starting to upload, which I have more of and I'll continue to upload. Again, I just appreciate everything that you guys do to support me and my channel. And if you guys ever have any questions, comments, concerns, or if you ever want to reach out and just talk about the game itself, talk about different decks, talk about the format, whatever you want to do, let me know. Also, let me know what type of videos you guys want to keep seeing. If you really like just the deck profiles and me talking about stuff, then let me know. If you want to see something different, also let me know. Otherwise, I truly appreciate, again, everything that you guys do for me. Please make sure to jam down that scrub scribe button. Also, share with your friends. And be sure to check out the Dragon Ball Super community discussion group that's on Facebook. There's a lot of members, over 5,000. So you can find a lot of common personalities in there. And, of course, you know, it's an internet forum. So expect all the normal things that come up in an internet forum. But also be sure to have fun. There's a lot of really good people out there. So make sure you keep exposing yourself to the community. Sorry. Make sure, make sure you continue to interact with the community. The first That sounded really bad. Uh, and just make sure to continue to have fun with the game. I'm excited for regionals. I'll be in Hartford, the first regional. I'm going to be bringing something pretty spicy, it seems like, for all my testing. Uh, and I have a deck that's yielding some results, which I will not share on this channel until post-regionals, uh, even if I scrub out. But please, again, I just want to thank you guys all for your support. Please be sure to subscribe to the channel. Also follow uh, We Are Intricate on Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. That's for Intricate Gaming at We Are Intricate. So make sure you follow there. They've been uploading videos from the LA TC, uh, Core TCG event, and we're going to be working on the top eight coming up for you guys, so you can be able to review those videos as well and get even more data about the Union Force format. Other than that, guys, that's all I got. Only a few minutes in. Pretty pretty short video. Again. Please be sure to leave me any feedback or things that you'd like to see going forward in the comments section of the video. And again, feel free to reach out to me. So I hope this video helps you get good, you bunch of scrubs, and get out of here. Okay, bye.